Essential Self-Care Podcast, a podcast for those of us who are, let's face it, too busy for self-care. In this podcast, you will hear real life stories from people who leaned into their self-care as they were navigating life's storms. You'll learn practical tips, tools, and strategies to incorporate self-care into your own busy life as well. You'll hear from expert guests sharing their expertise on specific tools and modalities of self-care to optimize your well-being in your life, career, and relationships. I'm your host, Dr. Sheetal Ajmani. I am a physician, best-selling author, and founder of Radiant Living Institute, where I guide high-achieving women to get unstuck and learn to live radiantly again through major life transitions. Quick disclaimer before we dive into the episode, please know that this podcast is for educational purposes only and is not medical advice. Always seek the advice of your own health practitioner or mental health provider for your specific situation. Now, let's get started. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Essential Self-Care podcast. Today, I am so excited to welcome back to the show, Dr. Erica Howe. Dr. Howe is a physician and founder of the Women Physicians Wellness Conferences. Dr. Howe is a board-certified hospitalist and a nationally known educator, wife, and mother to three. As a prolific speaker and advocate for improved wellness in medicine, she has spoken on topics including conflict management, gaining clarity in your clinical career, time management, and boundary setting. In 2018, she founded the Women Physicians Wellness Conference as a way of bringing women physicians together to share their struggles and their strategies for success. She believes that women are stronger together and wants to inspire them to find the courage, clarity, and community to succeed on their own terms instead of someone else's. So today, Dr. Howe is going to share a bit about her expertise, about the impact and the evidence behind the benefits of women attending conferences and retreats. And I'm really excited to dive into this topic. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Howe. Thank you so much, Dr. Ashmani. I so appreciate being here. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited to dive into this conversation. And for our listeners, Dr. Howe was on the show previously, where she shared a bit about her personal self-care story and journey, which actually is what led you to create these conferences in the first place. So really powerful. Um, I definitely really resonated with your journey. So for our listeners, definitely after tuning into this episode, definitely go back and check out that other episode with Dr. Howe as well. But for now, you know, so it's been a number of years that you've been planning these conferences since 2018. And as female physicians, right, we have that science side. We love to look at the research. We love to look at the data and the evidence. And so for our listeners, I'm on Dr. Howe's email list. And she sent out an email a few weeks ago as of the time that we're recording this episode together, which was just like a list of like all the recent well, maybe not all, but a good compilation of research behind a lot of the benefits of women coming together, you know, professional women coming together to attend conferences and retreats together. And I just thought that would be just something really neat and interesting to dive into in this episode. There were a lot of different benefits and a lot of different studies that you had cited there. What's some of your favorite benefits that you'd like to go ahead and highlight today? Okay. Get ready. So one of my favorite uh, studies is the Harvard Business Review. Um, And I should back up for just a second and just say the reason that I actually created that list of studies, which if anyone wants one, just email me. We'll talk about I'll give you all my contact information at the end. Um, But the reason I actually created it was because we were having occasionally a chair of a department say no to these women that wanted to come to the Women Physicians Wellness Conference. And I knew, so many of us know, just intuitively, that was so powerful for me. That has really been life-changing, you know, and that, you know, I've really connected with women in a way in my career, you know, and in my field in a way that I haven't before. Um, There were so many benefits that we saw that were intangible. And I knew there had to be data out there for what was tangible and what could be measured. And I also wanted to create a way for women, regardless of which, um, you know, women's networking event you choose to attend, because there are are multiple. I wanted you to have a way 
to academically and scientifically argue and um, support your case for attending these conferences because they really are powerful and, and not just mine, so many of them. I feel like they need them and they should be prescribed. I think everybody should go to one a quarter to really just, you know, uh, take check of their burnout rates and their wellness and where they're going in their careers and what they want to kind of focus on next. Um, but you got to get there in order to have those moments, those really kind of powerful transformation moments. So how could I increase that? And that was where this email came in, where I wrote out kind of all of the literature that I had found that uh, really can affect uh, just how transformative these women physician uh, or these women networking events can be. Yeah, I love that. I love that. You know, we're we're still in male dominated fields right. predominantly, right? As as female physicians, as um, in many of these subspecialties, as a lot of women who I work with also who are not in healthcare, but are in the corporate world or in executive or leadership positions, right? Um, a lot of women that I work with are in these male dominated fields. And so also, you know, this is still sort of I guess relatively new in terms of how do we show up? This is a passionate a topic that I've been really passionate about recently, actually, is just like, how do we show up as women um, honoring, embracing the feminine aspects of our styles of communication, of leadership, right? And problem solving skills into these fields that have primarily been set up to fit a male um, paradigm and, and model. And so this is just another place where I'm just kind of thinking about how you said, you know, you're really looking at that research and the data, right? Like intuitively, yes, we all know how we feel when we gather together in a group of women, of like-minded women, right? Uh, we all know how that feels. But sometimes when it comes to um, presenting this to the, you know, the chair of a department or um, presenting this to colleagues, right, who may not be sort of used to this sort of sort of thing or networking events yeah. gathering, right? It can be helpful to have that tangible evidence. It can be helpful to have that data behind it as well. So I think that's just such a really, a really great point as we continue to navigate and really show up in the best ways that we can as women in the fields and the professions that we have chosen to pursue. Absolutely. And I think that is really the take home and, and something that maybe, you know, um, deserves reminding to, you know, to let your chair um, know the reason that I'm doing this is so I can be a more productive member of our team. I can come in with less burnout rates, which we'll get into all of that data, but there's a lot of powerful uh, results that come from me decreasing my burnout, connecting with other women, and, you know, really being able to contribute to this institution for a significant amount of time. So absolutely. Yeah. And you know what that made me think of? I know I'd asked you what your favorite study was, but it just made me think of one of the studies that you cited in that email, which showed, you know, the amount of costs involved with replacing staff, replacing employees, replacing physicians, replacing subspecialists if they choose to leave because they've gotten burned out, right? I mean, for whatever reason they may choose to leave, but we know right now, particularly, um, there is such a crisis in healthcare staffing related to yeah. burnout and related to, you know, these issues. And so just the costs related to replacing that to the healthcare systems, like it's astounding. So it's better and that we preserve and do what we can to support those of us absolutely. who are, you know, in the field. And not, and not just yeah. better. Because we know that, you know, the C-suite cares about numbers and they, they are running a business, but it, it really, there's a price tag associated with retaining those physicians. In addition to you have a more experienced physician, you have someone who is likely to reach out for more specialized training over the years and really become a leader in their field. There's a lot of gains that are financial that go along with sending the women physicians in your world to these conferences and giving them that time to reflect and to learn and to figure out some of the, what we call soft skills or non-medical skills that go along with being 
a business person and being in a corporate world, because honestly, we are in a cor corporate world. It's the corporate world of medicine. We learn the medicine side of it, but we don't learn how to negotiate for higher pay. We don't learn how to get promoted, how to support each other in our promotions, how to set boundaries in our work and home life, um, how to say no when the opportunity doesn't serve us anymore. All of that, being able to learn that allows us to be more productive when we get into back into the clinical world, set better boundaries so that we can actually be more efficient with our time, see patients, spend the time that we need to spend with our patients without wasting time. Uh, I could go on and on. But yeah, so absolutely. I mean, and a couple of the a couple of things that you had mentioned, like one, like that brought some ideas to my mind too, like negotiating. Yeah, we're not taught how to do that. And the fact is still, even within medicine, female and male physicians in the same role. I mean, I've seen, you know, numbers and statistics of this just drastically right. different salaries, right? And so we need to um, empower ourselves with those skills as well. And then also the, like you had mentioned, kind of setting boundaries and setting boundaries between personal and, and work and, and and home and and clinical practice. You know, there's also been studies that, that I've seen about, you know, dual um, dual physician households, right? And that still um Just still distribution. exactly still that unequal distribution of of then household chores and so then often um it's called kind of like that double duty you know yep. when you come home it's like another full time job right yep. there as well so but all of these issues definitely need to be um discussed and and addressed right, right? Yeah, absolutely it, and it becomes so powerful because if you can make some of those small changes, they can really lead to big results in your career over time. I remember I was giving, I do speak a fair amount on conflict management negotiation. And I remember a woman at one point in a talk I was giving raised the, her hand and said, listen, like, yes, I make less than my male counterparts, but it's only about so many, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. I think it was like $30,000 a year. I really hate conflict. So I would, I'm willing to give up that 30,000 because I just, I hate that feeling of having to have that difficult conversation. And I'm a, I'm like a finance nerd too. So I have a compound interest calculator on my phone and I whipped it out and I was like, based on your age and that 30,000, by the time you retire, that will be an extra $3 million. Is $3 million enough for you to have a difficult conversation? I bet it is. I bet future you would really like you to do that. Yeah. So I mean, that was the first thought that popped into my mind when you mentioned that is like, oh, but all that compounded, <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I was yeah. like, no, you do not want to give up 30 grand a year. It doesn't sound like maybe it's that much. It's that much. And future yeah. you would really like you to have it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so exactly. that kind of reframing and getting support of other women and saying, I'm here with you and we're going to walk through it. And here's some, some language you can use around it. So you feel comfortable, you know, and that's, that's where we bring in our incredible speakers like yourself. Uh, you're speaking in our grand Cayman conference and I'm super excited to hear it. But, yeah. I'm uh, really looking forward to that. About um, my favorite, my favorite study is not technically a medical literature review. A, a lot of the others are, uh, this one is actually a Harvard business review um, study where they really wanted to see if women's networking events kind of move the needle on equality. That's actually the name of the study too. They studied attendees of a women's networking event and then other people who were planning to attend, but didn't ultimately sign up. And they wanted to see in the year following the event um, or the non-event, um, if you didn't attend, what were the results? And they found that for people who attended versus non-attendees, 15% uh, got a pay raise as compared to 5% in the coming year. So that's three X three times triple the rate of promotion or sorry, of the rate of pay raise. And then they also saw there was double the rate of promotion in the coming year after attending the event. So wow. I really love that study because numbers yeah. talk, right? Yeah. And I'm curious, was it, uh, was the, was the event a, because for example, I know, you know, women physician wellness conferences are a few days long. They're at sort of, you know, an outside site, remote site. This networking event, I'm just curious in the study, was it like a, a retreat or was it, you know, kind of a few hours an event, a one hour event? Do you know? Um, I don't know. They did not specify. Okay. I think they said that it was a three day event, but beyond okay. that, they didn't say how many hours a day. Um, okay. But 
super powerful. And yeah. in addition to that, and this, I would hope that our, all of our, you know, C-suites would care about how we're actually feeling. Um, and they may not, but it increased rates of optimism by like 78% in the coming year. That's a pretty huge number given that our rates of burnout as physicians and women physicians is like 75%. I mean, that's like, that. that's a pretty amazing benefit. And we're not talking like that they measured this data directly after the conference. They waited a year. I mean, so that yeah. things like that really do pay off. And we have other studies as well that have shown, as you mentioned, there was the study that was on faculty retention and just the cost of not retaining your faculty versus retaining. They found that um, there was a 10% increase in faculty retention among um, uh, people who had attended kind of a professional development uh, type seminar in the 10 years following, like 10 years. That's, how, That's like, incredible. It really does stay with you, you know, and, and it's not, it's the skills that you're learning in my opinion, but it's also the, the um, connections that you're making with other people. There's another study. I'm just going to go on and on. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Please do. Please do. That showed increased rates of mentorship. So, and that was actually those kind of networking events or your professional association was one of the most powerful ways to receive mentorship and move up the ranks accordingly. And that you're, a lot of us think of our institution as like, oh, I'll get mentored at my institution. Someone will kind of assign me or I'll meet someone who's a little bit older than me or higher in the ranks and they'll, they'll kind of take me under their wing. That is actually not the most powerful place to receive mentorship. It's actually, it can be sometimes outside your field, outside your specialty, um, but that those interactions with people who are maybe a little bit more removed from what you do day to day can be very powerful mentors and guides as you move through your career, which I, th I thought that was Quick shout out to today's sponsor, Reclaim Your Radiance, Radiant Living Institute's signature coaching program designed to help you reclaim your worth, renew your energy, and restore your happiness in your life, career, and relationships. This six-module curriculum has already helped countless women rediscover themselves through life's storms. From setting difficult boundaries within toxic relationships to finding their inner strength and power while navigating divorce and co-parenting to aligning their career and business with their authentic self and to learning how to live for themselves again after their kids have left the nest. This program has been a guiding force for women to live unapologetically and shine brightly within their lives once again, or often even for the first time ever. Experience the results for yourself. Head over to radiantlivinginstitute.com forward slash reclaim dash your dash radiance to learn more and get started. Fascinating. That is fascinating. It's it's something um, a bit, well, for me, a bit unexpected as well, you know? So I, yeah, that, that was fascinating. That one stuck out to me also in your email because I think that one was in the email as well. And so that one stuck out to me as well. I also love that you really have been emphasizing these long-term benefits that you have seen in, in, in many of these studies because I think so often we can go, we can be like, we need a retreat. I need to get away. I need to be with other women I, or, you know, um, really thinking and focused on the short term results and the short term benefits of that, um, which is completely, completely valid because there are those short term benefits as well. But I do think it's really fascinating to think about like how a year, five years, 10 years down the road, you can still see benefits from from that, you know, engagement there, um, which I think is really fascinating. I think um, I do want to emphasize this point also just for our listeners, just because, you know, the show is called Essential Self-Care. And one of my core principles is that small changes can make a large impact. So, you know, sometimes I think it is, sometimes I think we need to do really big things, right? And sometimes, and often, more often than not, I think it's doing sort of small things consistently that that make the biggest impact in our lives. And so if you have the resources and the means to attend, you know, a multi-day retreat, a multi-day conference, um, such as Women Physician Wellness Conferences, like do it for sure, right? You're hearing all the benefits here. You just heard from Erica. We are both going to be at the one in the in Grand Cayman in February 2025. So come hang out with us. Um, but if for whatever reason that isn't in your um, 
you don't have the capacity to do that at the moment, um, the resources or the capacity to do something like that at the moment, you know, maybe seeking out some local female networking groups. I know where I live, um, there's there are a few local women's networking groups, which is just, I've attended a number of those. Um, and it's just really, really valuable. Even, you know, some of them meet, you know, an hour a month, right? Mm -hmm. But having that on a consistent basis, again, I don't know necessarily the research behind those sorts of sort of intermittent sort oh, of yeah. cumulative events. But again, looking at sort of intuitively and innately how we feel through that, yeah. you know, I've had a number of connections and friendships as well as business opportunities. Like, so personally and professionally, just so many benefits to that anecdotally from my own experience. And she thought, I bet you can speak to this as well, but I will tell you as the person who runs the conference, I will get emails years later that just say, okay, I'm ready to go up for promotion. You had someone speak three years ago. Who was it? Remind me, can I connect with her? You know, like I, I really, I, she said something about X, Y, and Z, and I really need to know it. Um, you know, we had a lawyer who has come to speak about contract, uh, contract negotiations and what to look for in your contracts. And I, to this day, I still get emails. I got an email like last week, like, Hey, you know, connect me with her because I remember that I wasn't ready for it then, but I, the information has stayed with me. That knowledge has stayed with me and now I'm ready and I want to apply it. And alternately, I've also received emails, um, and, and texts and phone calls from people who attended the conference and heard a great talk uh, from me or one of the other speakers. And three years later, they used that information. That was when they needed to apply it and they applied it and they were successful. And they were coming back to just say, hey, like, thank you for that. And I'm like, but it was three years ago. <laughs> you didn't use it for three years? And I, no, I didn't, I, but I used it now. And now yeah. is when I really needed it. And I referred back to what you said. And that was, and that was where I, you know, I, I took it from there. And so that information we think of, I'm going to give you a piece of knowledge and either you're going to use it in that moment or not, but that is not true. So many of us are kind of keeping that uh, new knowledge in our back pockets and pulling it out months or years later when they really need it. And that, that is just the power of teaching and, and learning. Yeah. And I love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, even before we started the recording, we were chatting a little bit about that. And even, you know, you had shared an experience that you had where you found some notes from a conference years later and you were like, oh, this is really, really useful, you know? And so I think that's really neat too. And certainly a benefit of things like this is that kind of taking in all that information and we can only take in, you know, you've done a lot of research also in terms of, you know, the best ways that adults learn, you know, we can only, and you were sharing this with me just before we started the recording, that there's only so much we can take in at a given moment, right? So realizing, okay, I'll be able to take in this, you know, certain amount in this given moment and apply it right away. And then other information here, I can kind of keep in my back pocket for when I really need it. And, yeah. you know, I'll speak to it also personally from just sort of networking events, you know, since I've been really focusing on my business, my coaching, my speaking podcast full time over the past year and a half, I've been going to a lot more local uh, networking events and meeting people from all different industries, you know, and it's again, yeah. one of those things you never know when it, it may be a year later, or six months later, you're like, oh, yeah, I met someone who does that I could mm -hmm. use some support in that area. Right. And so I think that also speaks to whether you are, you know, practicing as a physician or whatever field you may be in, you know, that idea that you had also mentioned of even seeking, um, mentorship or support with people, not necessarily at your institution, but, you know, even other institutions or other fields or other professions, right? Or other industries. There's so much to gain from that. Now, like on the flip side, as, you know, kind of the founder of WPW, I, I would say maybe 30 to 50% of our uh, speakers each year have attended WPW in the past and I've gotten to know them. And so I start to learn like, this is my passion. This is what I really love to do. Um, you know, this is what, you know, you know, kind of the thing that I feel like I could teach and pass on to these other women physicians. And from there they become speakers. So it, it doesn't just serve the person who is maybe a little bit lower on the totem pole or more junior trying to rise up the ranks. It can also serve those of us who might be, you know, kind of running things and say, I'm looking for 
you know, in my case, speakers, but like, you know, I'm looking for a new junior colleague to take over my practice. Uh, we've had a fair number of those as well, where people have changed jobs because of the people that they have met at WPW. And they started to kind of explore new opportunities, um, just seeing other women do things a little bit differently than what they're used yeah. to. Absolutely. Goodness. There's so much power in that, right? Because the thing is, as human, as humans, male or female, mm -hmm. like just as humans, we are all looking to grow. We are all looking to make progress. We are all constantly looking for that next. Um, and so something to kind of set our goals on to work towards. I mean, that's just human nature. And so, yeah, that completely makes sense that no matter where you are in your career, um, you know, early, mid, late career, like, there's changes you may be looking to evolve and, and we can all benefit from, you know, being in relation and, and in these spaces with one another. Um, so that's so, so powerful. And there's so much more we could talk about yeah. this. Um, so much more. Um, I, I love this topic. Yes, absolutely. Something really interesting when you find out the mentorship piece, how it was somewhat surprising that it wasn't in your institution, but I will tell you, I have had personal experience with that and just the power of someone who is outside of your world a little bit and coming in and looking at it as an outsider, as just kind of, you know, um, an observer and, and, and they don't know, you know, they don't know all of the dynamics and the relationships and the politics. They're just looking at things from outside. I, I remember going to one to a uh, professional development conference uh, back in the day uh, before I started running any of them, and there was a class or maybe a more of a workshop on refining your CV for promotion. And this woman, everybody brought their own CVs, and then you would trade with someone. And I did not know this person at all, and she didn't know me. And we traded, and. Hers was very short, but it was kind of like bullet list of the way you might do it in the corporate world, but not necessarily medicine where we just, you know, you list every single thing. And so I started asking her about some of the things that she had listed there. And I was realizing, I realized that what she had listed was not indicating to me in any way on written paper, the amount of work and time and effort uh, that had gone into that. And so um, we kind of brainstormed on how she could fill that out a little bit better so that I really had an idea as to what, you know, the work that was involved, the leadership that was involved in that. And, but that also helped me because I went back and looked at my own CV and started revising it to maybe shorten it. Mine, mine was a little, it was a little long. So I was like, okay, we, I also need a happier medium than what I've got. And she had given me similar feedback. And I mean, so it, it served us both. And there's something just, it wasn't that, you know, I was higher in rank or years of experience than she was. That really wasn't what it was about. It was just the fact that I was an outsider and we did it differently at my institution. And I could come in with a fresh set of eyes and give her feedback. So I think there's really something so powerful about coming and meeting women that you don't know that are in your same field to be able to brainstorm. There's something that like you, you really get such different viewpoints, but there's something so powerful in that. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's the benefit of women's networking. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. Goodness. And again, there's so much more I can say on that, but for time's sake, can you share a little bit with our listeners about the conferences that you have developed, where they can learn more about these conferences and where they can learn more about you and the work that you're doing? Absolutely. Absolutely. As, as I talk about each of these conferences, I'll say all this information can be found at our website, which is WP or sorry, women physicians, wellness.com. That's S, you know, physicians with an S uh, multiple plural. Um, uh, we also have one conference that is uh, for non-physicians. So it's for your nurse practitioners, your PAs, um, nurse managers, but also people who are just not in medicine at all, just women professionals. Uh, and so that information on that can be found at the womenprofessionalswellness.com uh, as well. So we have four different conferences at this point. Super excited uh, because 2025 will be our first year of four. Um, we've previously had three. The first one is in January. It's our Bahamas conference. That's the Women Professionals uh, Wellness Conference. 
And then we have one in Grand Cayman. She felt is speaking at, which I'm very excited for. That's at the Can't end wait. of February. That is what we call WPW Climb. This is for people who are trying to advance in their careers and in their leadership development. So it's very much focused on leadership and career development. Then we have one in Aruba in May. That's called WPW Clarity. This is more about kind of personal growth and how do I maybe pivot in my life? How do I make changes? How do I set boundaries? Some of the personal challenges that we might have as women physicians and how to overcome those. And then we have our WPW Connect, where we connect some of the speakers from Grand Cayman and some from Aruba, and we invite them stateside to Florida because we know not everybody can leave and go to another country for their CME. So for that one, we have the best rated speakers from the other two conferences for that year and we invite them to Amelia Island and you get a little taste of both of the other conferences. Um, and then of course, as I mentioned, we have our Bahamas. Now I will say, uh, regardless of which one you attend, you get 18 CME, AMA, PRA, category one CME credits. Um, and we always end at 1 p.m. or before so that you have afternoons free to rest and reflect. Now, in addition to our website, we also have a closed Facebook group for women physicians only. Um, that is uh, Facebook at um, the, uh, the name is just WPW Conference or the, um, the backsplash, uh, backslash. And then we have an Instagram handle as well. WPW conference also. And then you can always just email me if you have any questions or anything you're trying to figure out about the conferences. It's ehow at themedicaleducator.com. The Medical Educator is just our parent company. So yeah, look forward to hearing from you in any way you want to reach out. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I will, of course, include all those links in the show notes. Thank you again for being here. It was so wonderful to chat with you again today. Sheetal, thank you so much for the opportunity. It was so much fun. I, I really, it's such a great time talking to you. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Essential Self-Care Podcast. If you like what you heard, be sure to subscribe, leave a positive review, and share this episode with someone you know. And remember, your free guide, Six Simple Yet Powerful Steps to Create Your Radiant Life, is waiting for you at RadiantLivingInstitute.com. Download it today.